Hey, friend. So, I have begun reading a book again, which has a pretty, pretty powerful place in my life in that it was the first book that my wife, Katie, shared with me. And it was a major bonding moment for us. It was something that we, it brought us together in a way that we were at that point still friends, totally platonic, nothing, no thoughts of anything else ever happening. But we were beginning to bond in a deep, deep way. And this book, I should probably tell you the title. I realize I'm stringing it along. That's not on purpose. It's just natural. It's a talent. It's called The Gift by Lewis Hyde. Um, maybe I said that already. Maybe not. I, um, and as I get back into it, I'm like, oh my God, not only does it evoke an entire period of my life in which this book m had a very significant impact and a real kind of like, I mean, I don't know about transformative effect, but a, but a very deeply, um, informative effect because it's all the gift by Lewis Hyde is all about gift economies in other words economies in which goods move not through business transactions or monetary transactions or or um, even trading, kind of like tit for tat, balance the scales, trading transactions, but through gift transactions, where as things move, a gift may leave behind the expectation that something will be given either back and or given on. Hyde talks about how a gift is sustained by its, by its ongoing movement. A gift that is held when we, when we receive a gift and don't move it on, don't pass it on, it ceases to be a gift. And there's a real collision of values between gift economies and more commerce capitalist economies obviously and 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 the first part of the book is really devoted to looking at looking at that looking at examples of economies that have worked based largely or entirely on gift exchange and he, but where he's going in the second part of the book, and I know this because I've read it before and because he mentions this in the introduction, where he's going with all this is that art and artistic creations, his thesis is art has to be a gift. And a work of art exists in two economies at the same time. It exists in the gift economy, and it, it can exist in the market economy. It doesn't have to enter the market economy, and it doesn't have to be valued by the market economy in order to be art. 
But if it ceases to operate in the gift economy, in other words, if it ceases to contain a gift, if a product does not contain a gift, does not move from the artist in the form of a gift, then it can't be art. Um, it might be a commodity, but it's not art. And so many things. I mean, I'm in, I'm in, I'm, I just finished the introduction. I'm in like, I don't know, I'm listening to the Audible. I'm like 12 minutes into chapter one and my mind is exploding. And I've read this book before. But, so, you know, if you, if you follow my post, buckle up, get ready to hear about Lewis Hyde for like the next month or however long it takes me to read this book. Um, but the, so one thing that came flashing through loud and clear, you know, there's a, there's a way in which I have held my own creative work. It, 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 I, up until embarrassingly recently, I've had this subconscious and I've, I've been aware of it actually for quite some time but I've had a subconscious conviction that unless my art my creative output sustained me financially then it wasn't legitimate then I wasn't legit I wasn't a legitimate artist because I wasn't hacking it in the market economy as an artist. Which is a conviction that is almost diametrically opposed to Lewis Hyde's thesis, <laughs> which is that the market economy has nothing to do with the value of a, of a piece of work. It may intersect. It's entirely possible that a valuable piece of art, a truly deeply gifted piece of art might also operate in the market economy and be valued there. But it is by no means a prerequisite. And in a lot of ways, the market economy, he says this beautiful thing about it's not that we can't have our gifts enter the market economy, but, but, but it is possible for the way in which a gift is transferred within the market economy to destroy it as art. It's possible for the market economy to destroy art, which is like another, in some ways it sounds like such a platitude, but in some ways, because because of the depth of how he's tying these ideas together, it's it's so powerful to recognize that we can destroy art by subjecting it to to life in an economy that's that has where the gift portion of the of the creative product is not is either not understood or as in the case of a you know a gift that doesn't continue to be given somehow stops moving the gift stops being a gift that is one way for art to die <sighs> huge um and so what he says is the gift portion of an artistic creation places a constraint upon our merchandising of the product. We have to be conscious of the gift inherent in art in order for it to truly be art. And so back to my kind of like self reflection here, you know, it was a, 
it was a, it was a, because, you know, I've been looking at this for some time now, and I've, I've been, I'd say, I've been pretty conscious of the fact that my feeling of not being legit as an artist, unless I'm, unless I'm sustaining myself in the market economy, that that was erroneous and that that was kind of off track. But <laughs> I had for, I had forgotten the just incredibly elegant way in which Lewis Hyde completely debunks that view and and gives us a a really ironclad set of perspectives or 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 a perspective a, a set of principles for how gifts work and how and therefore how art works that brings some real clarity to to why that perspective that i subconsciously held is total bunk and and what we should how we should how we should actually approach things how we should what, where we really should be placing our value where we should be placing the emphasis where i should be placing the emphasis as an artist in the work that i that I do. So I'm remembering why I fell in love with my wife. I'm remembering the period when that happened. I'm remembering this profound exchange that happened between between us and that in some ways lo launched our relationship but also launched each of our individual creative journeys we had each it wasn't the beginning for either of us but it was a, it was a chapter as a whole a chapter but a whole phase it's like a whole volume So it's pretty fun. And I'm probably on page like 27. <laughs> so I expect to hear more. So that's where I am today, folks. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you. Have a wonderful day. See you soon.